So we'll continue on. We won't worry about these normal paragraphs, um, nor even um, this one without the indent. I'll show you in a little bit why we won't worry about that. And so here we have some poetry, but there are no multiple stanzas, so we're not um, worried about um, adding any SLF styles in here. Uh, we'll handle those in just a little bit. So we'll continue through of our equations. I believe we do not have any other space break paragraphs. So again, we've just gone through and handled our space break paragraphs. And so now, we once again, and you might say, well, this is a little you know, repetitive where we can handle a lot of things at the same time. But again, the reason why we break things up into chunks is so that um, we can reduce errors that way because we know exactly um, what we're looking for. So at this point now, we're going to compose any paragraph that is not a P with some ex um, exceptions. And we're not going to worry about, um, you know, first and last or anything. We're just going to apply the structure as it needs to be applied as Tim has already described. So here, we're gonna come in here, and it's actually popped up here. I'm gonna go to our style galleries, bring those back, back up. All right. And I believe, uh, here we, this one we do not have epigraph, which is what this is, All right? So we're gonna go to low default, Open up epigraph, and we know that this is EP, but again, we're not going to worry about EPF, DPF. We're just going to compose it as EP for epigraph. We're going to compose author here as EPT. There it is. And so now our epigraphs are composed. We This we considered um, a uh, P paragraph, so we're not going to compose this. We're just going to leave this as is. And here, we're going to actually compose our list. Again, we're not going to worry about first, last, or anything of that nature. But I'll show you something that happens if you compose um, a list paragraph, a word list paragraph, um, without uh, first removing um, this field that where it creates for the list leader. If we go here, style calories, and we're going to go to our numbered list. Right. And this is NL. You see, we just lost our list leader, right? So in order to avoid that, um, we can actually make these list leaders real text that will not be removed <laughs> once um, once we've applied our character, our paragraph styles. Now, um, if your uh, document has just plain lists, there's no need to, um, you know, worry about specialized lists. Later on in this document, there is an exercise number list, which is why we're going to do it the way we're going to do it now. But if your document has, you know, simple lists um, and you don't, you know, there's no specialized list inside a sidebar or an exercise or anything like that, you can actually leave these as they are and the hub will compose them properly. So you don't have to worry about those here. But for the sake of this demo, we're going to go ahead and um, clear out uh, these fields and make the list leaders into real text. To do that, all you have to do is go to the SAI and then go to cleanup, right? And then here, under convert Microsoft Word element to live text, we're gonna click list leaders. That's all we're gonna worry about for now. And then say, actually, let me just make sure I'm clicking outside of that. List leaders here. And then, okay, it'll say clean up complete. And now you'll notice that these became normal paragraphs and these are now actual live text. Okay. And so now we're gonna go ahead and actually compose our numbered lists. Okay, and so we know that this is NL, 
these two are also an L. And because this is a sublist of this list item here, these are an L1. Again, we are worrying about that distinction because that will get lost if we do not um, compose it now, but we are not worrying about first and last and standalone or styles like that. <laughs> We're gonna continue scrolling through. We'll get here to this, um, this paragraph, which is indented, and as you can see, has this little end note at the end indicating that this um, is a block quote. Right, and so because of that, we're gonna compose it as is, okay? And so um, this is the process for the rest of the file. So I want you guys to actually um, go through and um, like have a go at the rest of the file while I compose it here on the screen so you guys can see that as an example. Um, and then that should give you some hands-on time um, there. And then once I've composed all the non-P paragraphs, we're gonna go through um, and just check that we don't need to uh, that we um, need to compose certain character styles, and I'll show you which ones are those. Um, and at that point, we'll be close uh, to finishing the composition. So, go ahead and compose the rest of the non-P paragraph. So, anything that is standard text here, you can tell here, um, and anything that doesn't have any kind of special rendering or anything or set off in some way. Um, you can leave that alone and just worry about composing um, the rest of the document. And do we have any questions before we, we go full hands-on at this point? So as I'm scrolling through, right, again, remember, we were already assessed this document, so we sort of already figured out that this indentation indicates that this is a block quote. The other hint that we have is that there's some citation here at the bottom. I'll make this a little larger so people can see. Right, if you hover over it, you see some text there. And so what we'll do here is place our cursor in the paragraph, go to our style galleries, load the default galleries, go down to block quotation, and then here in this style gallery, we're gonna go ahead and just hit BQ, and that is now composed as BQ. Again, we're not worrying about first, or last, um, if you remember from our little quiz, this would be a standalone, but we are not worrying about that. We're gonna let the hub uh, take care of that, specifically the refiner tool in the hub. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly compose um, the rest of it here. You guys can watch and work alongside where I am. That's DIA for dialogue. Here we have a bulleted list. But because there is no differentiation between bulleted and unnumbered list in this document, I'm just gonna call it unnumbered list. Regular P, regular P. Here we have exercise. Actually, see, here's an example in this exercise one. I missed that head, so I can go ahead and compose that now. The X. And these are numbered lists inside an exercise, so it's E, X, and L. Here we have our sense line, and as you can see, there are tabs here. Tabs don't mean anything, um, but they do indicate here that these should be indented in one level. So we'll go to sense lines. Mm -hmm. 
we won't worry about the tabs right now. We can get rid of those easily later. Now I am going to compose this um, paragraph even though it's it is um, a P paragraph. It, the reason why it, it is because uh, this is a paragraph continued. The sense of uh, the poetry uh, interrupted this thought and so this paragraph continued. Um, that is almost, I wouldn't say an editorial thing, but you need human input in order to see um, um, where um, these should be. So we're going to go here. Make that paragraph continued. Scroll up, make sure we haven't missed any before that. There it is. In this case, so as you can see, you don't have to be perfect um, your, you know, while going through it. Um, but um, you should always be willing to double check your work. And here for the figure attribute. We're going to go ahead and load our figure style gallery and click figure fig ATR, which is for figure attribute, which is what this line is. Again, interrupted text, so that's pecan. Load that default gallery body. We're just going to say pecan. And again, we, you can create your own galleries if you find that you have certain styles that you use very commonly. Um, some of you, while we were going through the earlier things, saw that I had extra um, extra style galleries. These are some that I have created uh, just on my own to have certain um, things that I use often. So that's an option for you as well. And here we have some equations so that Here, I believe equations should be it's a Q. It's under figure. So we'll go back here. Go to figure, and okay. And we're just going to call these EQ. Yeah. Now here we can see that I've actually inserted, um, yeah, there's actually a bit of, um, of an error here. Um, does anybody see, like if you're looking at my screen under sidebar, where there might be an error? It's a little difficult to tell with the Laura Ipsum. Uh, character, but you can sort of see it. It's in this general area here. Does anybody see the error? Yep, there it is. It's the extra paragraph. This is a badly broken um, paragraph. If we were to compose this, and then I go ahead and say this should be SB, we'll see what happens here. Let's go down the sidebar. If I compose this as SB, the rest of the paragraph stays normal because of the way that it's broken. So we need to make sure um, that those get caught. So because if not while we're composing, we're going to run into some issues. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. If I do that, you'll see that everything is now SB, but the rendering is a little off. Right, because this maintained the same font size and whatnot. So we're not, we don't want that. Um, again, doesn't really matter, but for the sake of, um, of being a completionist, we're gonna 
go ahead and fix this before we actually compose um, our sidebar paragraph. So we went ahead and deleted the extra paragraph mark and just go down the sidebar and SB. So just going to go down through the rest of it as quickly as possible as we are quickly running out of time. All right, I'm going to compose this in a slightly quicker way. These, this is a letter, and I'm using letter styles here. And finally, we have another pecan, so I'm going to go ahead, fix that paragraph continued, and we're going to make this TD. All right, and so I'm going to go up here. As you can tell, I use um, all three methods of uh, composing because usually that's the way that it works easier. This paragraph mark uh, can't be deleted just because of the table's at the end and it's not actually uh, there. And so the next step, we have two more steps to go through and we're going to go through these just a little bit quicker um, as they involve many of the same tasks that we've already uh, been doing. So now we're going to apply uh, specific character styles that need to be applied to certain sections. And I'll just tell you which ones they are. Um, if you have a figure, um, uh, some examples, for example, if you have dialogue speakers that need to be uh, highlighted in some way in dialogue, you'd apply uh, DISPK, uh, fig, fig HN for figurehead numbers, if you have those, and those need to be delineated in such a way. And all of these are marked in the SCML list as um, as um, character and paragraph style pairs. So I know I have dialogue, so we're gonna go right down to that dialogue and we're gonna compose this as DISPK for dialogue speaker. Okay. Our figure does not have figure head number, so we're not going to worry about those, but our table does have a table head number, so we are going to worry about this one. And we're going to make that THN, and I'm using a little quick style bar up there just to make it a little quicker. There we go. And those are our characters uh, throughout, um, the character paragraph pairs throughout this um, document, right? And then the last thing we do before running our cleanup and uploading uh, to the hub, which we'll uh, save uh, for next time, right, is we um, need to insert structure indicators. And structure indicators, um, the hub is pretty smart at picking up things like CT, CN, and delineating that as, you know, self-contained, um, you know, chapter text. So, for example, it'll know that the table of contents is one chapter uh, or one section of a book, and then the chapter uh, followed by, um, preceded, excuse me, by CN is one uh, chapter. But if you do not, for especially front matter material, if you do not um, sort of indicate to the hub that, that each section is its own um, separate piece of content, it'll bunch everything together so we include um, um, so we'll include uh, the insert um, um, structure indicators. And so to do that, um, all you have to do, it's, it's really simple, is just highlight the text. And for example, I know that this is the half title. The half title in a book is usually on its own. So um, we're going to treat that as if it were its own chapter. Structure indicators have um, a, another function, which we'll discuss later. I don't want to bog people down with too much um, information. We'll discuss that next class. So here, I'm going to go to the SAI, insert structure indicators, and I'm going to call it chapter. Here you go. And then you'll see that the SAI automatically says begin chapter, end chapter, and now OTN demo as a half title will actually, um, will actually be on its own and it won't be lumped in with the series page or um, the uh, title page or the copyright page or anything like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that for the rest of this front matter, which is the only place where we have to do it here for the demo. 
right. tell that while you're doing that, I'm just going to mention real quick, we will go over this in a little bit more detail later mm -hmm. on. Um, for, for the purposes of this, you can almost think of these as indicating page breaks. Uh, they'll be, they'll display a certain way in typesetting. They won't display as literal text. Um, and they, they do have a function to break pages in electronic versions of it. Mm -hmm. um, but, but we don't need to do them around things that are what we call inherently structural, which will be a topic to discuss next week, like CTFM, chapter number, anything that already has kind of like a chapter uh, designation at this point. Mm -hmm. And parts and unit titles are included in that as well. Um, and so there, now at this point, our file is mostly compose, you'll notice, okay, wait a second, we still have a lot of normal, like floating around in here. Um, but that is okay, because the hub will actually compose normal paragraphs, it will make those P and will add P after P after spacing distinctions as needed um, throughout um, the document once you upload into the refiner, which we'll discuss uh, next week. So that's just a little bit of a preview. Um, We'll leave cleanup, so we'll leave everything here. I'm gonna go ahead and save this file. We'll leave cleanup in the refiner uh, for an, uh, next class. I just wanna make sure that we have time to answer um, any questions or any concerns or any, um, any worries at this point. Next class, um, we're going to need you to install uh, Sublime. I'm actually going to, there you go, there's the, uh, the text. Thank you, Karen. Um, she read my mind. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to have you just go through this. The instructions are pretty straightforward. There is more information in there than just the instructions. Um, but if you, um, all you need to worry about is installing um, um, Sublime as you would install any um, any application on your machine and then adding um, the scribe tools that are um, that we point to in that document. Uh, if you have any trouble uh, installing Sublime or anything like that, please let us know and we'll be uh, more than happy to assist you uh, in that area. We're not gonna be getting too deep um, into um, Sublime next class, but we are going to be using it um, in order to QC our composition to make sure that we, um, you know, that everything is as it should be.